auras. Every living creature has an aura, the aura is the life force of the spiritual body that's known to many as the soul or psyche. All religions have sacred images of the aura, or parts thereof. Christianity has focused on the halo in its images but all humans without exception have a halo, albeit perhaps not golden in color. Dr. Rampa was trying to develop an aura camera as this would have enabled any non-clairvoyant person to see the aura. By using a combination of colored lights, sounds and specific gemstones repairs and corrections could be made before the illness actually manifests within the physical body, whilst medical science would take one enormous leap forward. Dr. Walter J. Kilner was on the right tracks when jealous people went to great lengths to halt his work and humanity had to settle with the inferior X-ray. All animals, plants, birds, insects, and fish can either see or perceive auras. Cats are very special as they can see both the physical and spiritual planes at the same time, hence they are sometimes called the eyes of the gods. If someone could develop an aura camera it would save testing on defenseless animals which is completely wrong and against the laws of nature. Since writing this there has been a few people around the globe who are now investigating auras. The basics elements in discussion are, the etheric, which shows any individual's vitality or exhaustion at that moment in time, the aura which shows the current and future health of the physical body and any individual's actual true intentions or thoughts. Finally the aura sheath that shows the individual's current spiritual evolution in all previous incarnations. From the physical to the aura sheath there are nine separate elements, but we will only mention a few so as not to confuse you. Emanating from your body is the etheric and this can be seen by most non-clairvoyant individuals. Next would be the etheric double which is not under discussion here and that is what a ghost is. Then the golden bowl which is also not under discussion here but is the halo Christians depict around the heads of saints, something everyone has. Then the flowering lotus that is apparent immediately above your head. I will explain later how to start seeing both the etheric and flowering lotus, and what to actually look for from personal experience, next is the aura itself, this is only visible to people who are clairvoyant and finally we have the aura sheath, again this is only visible to the very, very few. The etheric which can be seen by everyone. The etheric is a haze-like effect that surrounds the whole body of every living creature and can be seen by anyone who wants to see it. Many people mistake this for the aura which it's clearly not. This shows any individual's vitality or exhaustion at that moment in time. The flowering lotus resides between 1 and 2 inches above your head and is like two fountains combined, one above the other. This is one of your many chakras. The aura is a like a magnetic field in pattern, but not actually magnetic in characteristics, as it is of electrical nature and surrounds the whole body of every living creature. This field will show the current health of the physical form and any future ailments before they actually manifest in the physical as an illness. Also, the aura very clearly shows people's intentions, thoughts and actions, nothing can ever be hidden. The emanation of lines flows between the chakras of the body, there are seven chakras for the physical and two more for the spiritual body, therefore nine in total. Many constantly forget the two spiritual chakras and yet we are all spiritual beings, therefore they should not be ignored. Finally, the aura sheath which shows the current spiritual maturity of the individual and all their previous incarnations. This is only viewable to the very few due to the information contained within and Dr. Rampa was one of those very few people who could. Within the book titled You Forever Dr. Rampa explains how to practice towards seeing the aura. Firstly I wish to explain to you how to see the etheric as this is the easiest thing to perceive. I have come to the conclusion that the etheric can be seen by everyone unlike the aura. Before showing some friends how, the two usual common questions are. How can we see this etheric? What exactly are we looking for? These are real well-founded questions, so let's proceed without further ado. For viewing any parts of the etheric flowering lotus or aura you must use peripheral vision. 
Don't try looking directly at the person facing you as until you know exactly what you are trying to see you won't see it. Lighting also plays a major part when starting out. You don't want a bright room, dim the room by closing the curtains, and ideally the subject will be in front of a dark matte background, but certainly not white. Ideally this person would be standing or sitting around 12 feet from you and not immediately in front or next to you. For seeing the aura in full color the subject must be completely naked, for at least 30 minutes to rid the influences of clothing, whereas for seeing the etheric clothing doesn't matter. First we need to teach the eyes to view without actually focusing. Have you ever just used your peripheral vision rather than actually focusing on an object? Try walking around your room or house by only using your peripheral vision, which is you must not focus on any one object. It will seem strange at first but this is how your eyes have to be positioned to see the etheric. It's a little like having your eyes out of focus. Once you can do this without a strain on your eyes you are almost there as it's really that simple. If you feel dizzy or your eyes hurt then stop, you will need to practice until it doesn't. It's not that you're going to hurt or damage your eyes, it's just that you've never used them in this way before. Let me stress a point here, that no damage whatsoever can be done to your eyes by just using your peripheral vision alone. Let us assume that you can now view by peripheral vision without any discomfort. Now you need to look towards your subject or subjects without actually directly looking at them. I find that looking between 1 and 9 inches from them you will see what at first looks like a thin haze like surrounding their body. It is a bit like seeing a double image from an old TV whose aerial misalignment causes the TV screen to show a slightly out of true ghost image. This does vary from person to person and if you can get a subject whose very energetic his slash her etheric will stick out making it easier to see. When someone is exhausted or ill the etheric is much closer to the skin and therefore more difficult if not impossible to perceive. For lovers who wish to practice after having sex the etheric will stick out like a light from a lighthouse, as will the flowering lotus. Once you can see this haze then you can slowly change your eyes to actually focus on the haze and congratulations you are now seeing the etheric. You are going to kick yourself when you discover how easy it is. Once you know exactly what to look for it's very easy to see the etheric. You can easily see it whilst walking down the street. There are days when you won't see anything as it does depend on your current state of health or mood. If you are tired, stressed out, or run down you may not see anything but don't stop trying. The etheric shows the vitality of any individual. The flowering lotus is your next step. It sits around 1 to 2 inches above the head and looks like two objects together. I am going to use common day object names to aid visualization. What I can see is a wide squat fountain with a tall central fountain, but the way the water within these two fountains flows is different to how water actually flows in a real fountain. There are handheld fireworks called sparklers which are used for numerous celebrations. It is a small long stick which is lit at one end and then slowly burns towards the base emitting sparks as it does. The water in these two fountains sparks and flows in the same way as this handheld firework sparkler does. If you have no idea what a handheld sparkler firework looks like, this is a picture of one. Women are superior to men as viewing subjects for aura research because a woman's aura has brighter colors. Regrettably many think that if man is viewing a naked woman it's purely for some alternative motive. Anyone wishing to view the aura must remember that the viewing subject must be completely naked, that is, not under the auric influence of clothing which will misguide. Once your subject is naked it takes around 30 minutes for the influence of any clothing to dissipate. You may not be able to see these all in color yet but don't despair you are on the right path. If you have a sympathetic partner who is willing to help you, you can then practice until you can see the aura and then the fun really begins. Having very briefly seen the aura with my own eyes I can confirm it is alike the rudimentary third image on this page albeit very wispy and much finer, flowing between all nine chakras. Aura pictures which are available from many sources are not real aura images, they are all just the subetheric auric sheath being falsely illuminated and not displaying the actual aura. It's merely a distorted form of corona discharge a bit like holding a fluorescent tube by one end under an electrical power pylon and watching it light up.
a false appearance of being switched on, and not the real thing. Aura Pictures, do you want proof that the majority are fakes? Here is a simple test which works on most Aura cameras. Take the Aura camera electrodes in your hands but do not sit in front of the camera. Make sure that the camera is facing a black background and take a picture. You will discover to your amazement that it has produced an Aura picture even without you being in the picture. How can it be an Aura image without you? Current Aura cameras just measure the electrical resistance within the palm, hence the electrodes and display this electrical resistance as an image that is not a real Aura image by any stretch of the imagination. Dr. Rampa's words on this Some people now believe that the Kerlin system is the answer, which it is certainly not, because to my definite knowledge the Kerlin system of photography is just something going in the wrong direction. I know it to be an absolute waste of time, because basically their system is so crude that it can be likened to covering a horseshoe magnet with a piece of paper and on top of the piece of paper sprinkling iron filings so that the lines of magnetic force would be indicated as the iron filings arranged themselves in a pattern dictated by the magnetic influence from the magnet. Read Twilight for more information. Using light to help the body repair the situation has been developed by Newcastle University within the UK. Researchers demonstrated they have found ways to make antibodies only respond when a particular light is shown upon the area in question. This light is shown at the site of the tumor to activate the antibodies. The body does not, on its own, generate the antibodies needed to fight cancer, as it does so often with other diseases, so there have been high hopes for these therapeutic antibodies stimulating the body's own T-cells which regulate the production of its own antibodies and the light helps target the affected portion of the physical. Some have been safely harnessed into drugs for cancer, Herceptin is one example, Ovestin is another. Although this is not actually working with the aura, it is using light to help the body repair itself and that is a step in the right direction. Dr. Harry Oldfield has invented a system called Polycontrast Interference Photography, or PIP for short which is the closest we have come to actually seeing the real human aura. This system doesn't use electrodes or high voltage as other methods have previously done. Dr. Oldfield's very safe system clearly shows the energy fields that flow between the physical chakras. Dr. Oldfield has also identified signs that clearly show an illness within the aura before it manifests within the actual physical. With his other invention called electrocrystal therapy, or ECT for short, Real-time corrections can be made to the auric flow and restore balance and once balance has been restored to the auric flow the physical also recovers. Dr. Oldfield is being taken very seriously by medical science and the occult world. A Russian girl named Natasha Demkina is a known living person who can see the aura and can successfully diagnose an ailment or illness, even before it's manifested in the physical. Because she has no medical background Natasha cannot always give medical names to ailment and at times she draws what she sees. A famous diagnostic drawing of a sarcoidosis granuloma is evidence of her remarkable vision and since confirmed by medical science around the globe. Regrettably science is quick to denounce such claims because either they don't understand it or it conflicts with their current knowledge, sadly they see it as a challenge to their profession. If science put as much effort into trying to understand something new as they do in ridiculing such facts science would move forward in great leaps. Aura cameras could also help the police to verify if someone was either lying or telling the truth when questioned as lies always show up on the aura in a particular shade of green and there is no way to hide this. Criminals could not get away with crimes as they do today, as it would make it impossible to lie when questioned. The aura tells everything about a person.